Senator Scullion. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Acting Deputy President. Uh, uh, I, I, I was quite surprised. I, I thought actually uh, uh, Senator Ferner, who I have a great deal of respect for, um, was perhaps speaking on the wrong bill. <laughs> uh, th this is actually. Uh, this bill just simply gives the capacity for the parliament to consider something. That's all it does. It simply says uh, that like all regulations, or very many regulations, we just simply want to ensure that this regulation, that we can declare a bioregional plan, that is something that the parliament can have a look at to make sure that it doesn't have unintended consequences. Now those on the other side just recently haven't been sort of caught up on that sort of thematic of the Senate, that we should actually scrutinise things, we should look carefully, we should have a debate and then vote on it. And I know that the new word is truncated. Uh, let's just sort of stack this down to about two seconds. I mean, I know that this follows that thematic. And we couldn't possibly, from those on the other side, and I would hope that the Greens aren't possibly going to vote against this piece of legislation. But those, 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 in the, those on, the, uh, on, uh, on those seats directly opposite, um, you know, th this is just more of the same. We couldn't possibly have any more, more scrutiny, and that's all that this does. So Senator Ferner, uh, if, 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 if it's just incredible. In his contribution, he says, um, in making, bringing a regulation to this place somehow it's going to affect the Great Barrier Reef. He spoke with great passion about what a wonderful thing it was, and who could possibly deny that? But of course, uh, you know, allowing something to be disallowable in this place certainly isn't going to be doing that. We talked about the global financial crisis, that jumped in. Queensland floods. You know, having a disallowable instrument is a really powerful thing. Uh, you know, it's up there with an act of God. Um, so we also talked about uh, uh, the consultation having to be repeated. Imagine consulting once probably getting it wrong. So what you do, you bring legislation to this place to get checked and oh no, shock horror. Don't tell me that we now have to go and, and actually go and consult again. That would be absolutely horrific, wouldn't it? I mean, uh, Senator Ferner, I mean, he, he is a, genuinely a, a lovely bloke, but uh, I think he's got the, uh, the wrong end, the, the short end of the, the deal here. It's certainly got the short straw. He's then moved. It's, this is going to create uncertainty amongst recreational and commercial fishers. Well, uh, if you're ever a, a recreational and commercial fisher out there, you need to really worry because the Senate's going to have an opportunity to scrutinise a pe particular piece of legislation. Senator Ferner, really. This is, is a fair income uh, short straw. Then he goes on to talk about a great Queenslander, a fantastic Queenslander, that's going to really take the the, the bat to the Labor Party at the oncoming election, a great Queenslander, a very thoughtful and incisive man, Mr Campbell Newman. And he, and he de decried Campbell Newman because Campbell Newman's somebody who actually understands this process. And he, de he decried the fact that Campbell Newman has stood up for the Aboriginal people of Cape York and has supported Wild Rivers legislation that only allows one thing. Only one thing, Mr Acton Deputy President, that you go through the decency of actually asking Aboriginal people and you actually have to consult with Aboriginal people and you have to seek their written consent to put a, a park-like provisions over their land. And if you seek their consent and you get their consent, then you can go and move to do that. Quite a decent thing. And yet somehow Senator Ferner says, well, that's, uh, that's a terrible thing that uh, Campbell Newman's doing. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just absolute rubbish. And of course, uh, I, I just would remind him that when he talks so carefully about the Wenlock River and the Steve Irwin Nature Park and at the same breath seemed to decry John Howard, it was in fact John Howard who gifted that in memory of Steve Irwin. It was our government that created that particular park. So we also talk, he talked briefly about uh, uh, that this bill will suddenly not allow protection he talked about researchers in boats being, being concerned about the reef. I'm not really sure what that was about. Breaching of corals. We've got to be careful that if we pass this legislation, we're going to have some increased bleaching in corals. And then I think this is, this is uh, a long straw, Senator Ferner, but uh, you know, this is really, uh, I have to say, I do feel a bit sorry that you've been asked to come into this place uh, uh, to, to uh, somehow defend the indefendable. This is a very good and important piece of legislation, Mr Deputy Deputy President. It does one simple thing. It says if a, a marine bioregional plan is declared, then it should come before Parliament, as literally thousands of bits of regulation do all day, every day, that are disallowable. 
And it's a disallowable instrument. It has to sit on the table for a period of time so people are going to have a look at it. And there's a potential to be able to disallow that instrument. It's a normal thing. But there are some really good and important reasons why this should be disallowable, Mr Acting Deputy President. You see, I followed this very closely, uh, as many would know, uh, in, in my life. Uh, I was very proud to be part of a government that introduced its oceans policy. The first comprehensive policy that looked, after, look, looking, that looked at further levels of protection about our oceans, about our biosphere. And not only did that, it was an exciting time. You can read our policy, it's all about excitement. What we're going to do, how we're going to measure it, what sort of research we're going to do, how we're going to control the impacts on that. A very exciting time. Sadly, um, after the creation of uh, a number of marine protected areas, sadly, after uh, those opposite uh, and the current Labor government took power, again, porridge fingers. Everything they have touched has turned to porridge. Um, our policy, our alternative policy, uh, would immediately put on hold the bioregional planning process to allow for its restructure. We would provide fair and balanced displaced effort policy. We would base marine protected areas on science and we would establish sensible and balanced marine park boundaries and develop management plans in consultation with industry. But when we had that plan, we'd want to make it disallowable. Everybody gets something wrong every now and again. We mightn't have thought of something. And this place has the resources and the people who focus on that completely. We have committees, and that's what this place does very, very well. But there are two important points. The first is that we've moved, as we've moved to marine protected areas, there has been a primacy, a primacy of the Department of Environment over all other matters, over all other matters. And well, so I, I know a lot of people in the department are wonderful people. Uh, Connell O'Connell, we've, we've blued for years, but he's a great bloke and a very wise man. But it seems over a period of time that primacy means that's the only thing that will be taken into consideration and a bioregional plan put by the Minister for the Environment will just come in here and that will be it. But what we have said in our policy, the uh, uh, all marine protected areas will be signed up by both the Minister responsible for fisheries and for the environment. It's a far more comprehensive and sophisticated approach as one would, e would, would expect from the Coalition. But the most important thing is the different tools that we've got. One of the most important elements is to make sure that there are no unintended consequences. And so when you put a marine protected area out there, one of the things people need to very much need to understand, we call it a bioregion. We talk about fish. We talk about corals. We've talked about dugongs. We've talked about whales. But let me remind everyone, you cannot make a whale turn left. You can't make a piece of coral grow over there. You can't say to a dugong, you know, don't swim over here. Because a line on the map does absolutely nothing to affect those things. A line on the map only affects the behaviour and the activities of people. And it's the people that we're seeking to benefit, because that's what this place does. And we benefit people by putting protected areas in the right way and in the right places. And so we need to ensure that the impact of putting a marine protected area is a proper impact and has been done for proper things. And this is when you've got to look at motive. We have in this country, without a doubt, world standard fisheries. And as a past chairman of the International Coalition of Fisheries, I say that with some authority. I say that with some authority. So one of the things that we know is something to look out for in, about our environment is the further politicisation of fisheries management. What I'd like to do, for example, is to say in New South Wales, in New South Wales, there was a commitment by then Premier Bob Carr with the Greens for green preferences in New South Wales that we will lock up some of the inshore areas, a percentage of the inshore areas of up to 50%, and we will swap preferences. It was a wonderful idea. But of course they didn't think about this notion of displaced effort. So you can imagine all of those on the other side, all of those the, the senators on that side, will close 50% of the Senate. Well those, all those senators on the other side, as you'll see in some divisions, they all have to come and sit here and there is not much room. And I can tell you, you will wear out the cushions on this side exactly twice as fast. 
So how can you say, by putting rolling out closures across New South Wales, across 50% of New South Wales, what you have done in one fell swoop is to increase the fishing effort in New South Wales by 50% and then say, oh, by the way, that's helping the environment. It's an absolute nonsense. And it does happen and it has happened. And so you should bring things to this place like this, like a bioregional plan, and it should sit here so we can ensure, we can ensure that those unintended consequences of displaced effort, because this was not done to protect the environment, this was done for a self-serving Labor government in New South Wales, who didn't care about the environment, who didn't care about the communities, they just cared about themselves. And we've seen a lot of that, Mr. Madam Acting Deputy President. I've seen a lot of that in this time. And I've seen a lot of that in this government. So this place needs to be positioned to ensure that the motive for providing marine protected areas uh, is a pure motive, and it's a motive based on science. And so that would give us that opportunity. Of course, if you don't have that opportunity, in other words, the Labor Minister in this place would be able to say, and that's what they want to do now, they're not going to vote for this because they want to say, I want to be able to trade the environment off politically. We don't because our legislation says we don't. We want to put it before all of Parliament. There is another uh, element of a displaced effort, which is just a very technical management issue. Whenever we, whenever we create a, a bioregion, bioregional plans invariably deal with uh, use. So there's different areas about the sorts of things you can do in different places. Some places, certain sort of gear effort can't be used. You can't troll in certain areas, a certain sort of fishing. Some areas are completely protected. And we know now in fisheries management and uh, with the use of marine protected areas globally that the most important thing is when you do something, as, as I said earlier, if you have an impact by closing half of it, You've got to have a policy in place that ensures they don't come from this side on this side and have a negative net impact on the environment. So what you do, you have a displaced effort, effort, effort policy. There might be a whole suite of things. If we were a commercial industry, you would buy 50% of it out. But there's no point buying 50% of it out if today you make a declaration to close, to close an area and everybody comes over this side doubles the area. And then we'll think about buying a few fishermen out over the years, because the first day, the first day that that closure is made, we are having a net negative impact on the environment. And so when, these, when that comes to this place, when the bioregional plan comes to this place, we'll have an opportunity to say, well, before this comes into effect, have you already mitigated the changes to the, to, to the use of, of those areas? Have you put in an effective uh, displacement policy. And we can look at those policies and we'll say, fine, they put those measures in. And we'll be able to say, because it's consistent with the coalition policy, that we would not declare an area before we have moved the effort, because that's actually dealing with the best interests of the environment, the best interests of the fisheries. And of course, I'm not only talking about the best interests of the environment and the fisheries, but it's also in the best interests of the communities, the families and the businesses that all rely on it whether it's tourism, whether it's just through visitation, whether it's support industries, whether it's in commercial fishing, whether it's in recreational fishing. In fact, all of those businesses that Senator Ferner indicated earlier. And I'm surprised that Senator Ferner, given his, his, uh, his, in, his sudden embracing of the environment and his claim that they are true environmentalists on the other side, well, if you are, those on the other side, if you are indeed as you claim to be true environmentalists, then you should support this legislation. You should support this legislation. But sadly, uh, I, I suspect, uh, Madam Acting President, they will not. So you have to look for the motive. Why, under such obvious, well-known, well-researched processes, would they say, no, look, we don't really want that sort of level of scrutiny? It's because those on the other side quite clearly have an agenda to ensure they can continue to trade away the environment against their political self-interest. They have done this in New South Wales. They have done this in North Queensland by trading away the interests of Aboriginal people and their future 
against what is now on the public record as a preference deal with the Greens. They have put their own interests already. They have put their own interests above the interests of both the environment and our first Australians. They should stand condemned. And even better, they should support this legislation.